Hi everyone, uh, myself Dr. Manjunatha C, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, RV College of Engineering, Bangalore, India. In this video, I would uh, briefly explain uh, the conducting mechanism uh, in case of uh, the polymers by taking uh, polyacetylene as an example. Conducting polymers are actually the polymers, uh, they're actually more precisely, they're intrinsically conducting polymers. Uh, are po organic polymers that conduct electricity and their uh, electrical conductivity is, uh, conductivity is almost uh, near to metallic and they're also considered as semiconducting uh, materials. Uh, this is the scale which is representing uh, uh, the conductivity and uh, resistivity. Uh, we know that insulators, uh, are, uh, they do not uh, conduct electricity and their conduct and the conductivity value, it is coming uh, in this scale. Any material is sh showing the conductivity, they are all uh, in this range, they are all considered as insulators. And uh, semiconductors, uh, they exhibit conductivity somewhere between 10 power minus 6 to 10 power minus 2 Simon per centimeter. And metallic, uh, they are all uh, more than 100, uh, 10 power 2 to 10 power 6 Simon per centimeter. And uh, there are the polymers which are uh, found uh, to be insulator uh, if they're not doped, if they're not uh, modified. Uh, upon doping, upon charging, uh, the insulating uh, polymer, they become conducting and they show the conducting almost uh, equal to uh, near to metallic. So they are called electroactive polymers and also called composite blends, polymeric composites and blends. Uh, one of the main requirement for the polymer uh, to show conductivity is that that polymer should have a linear backbone. Means for the electron to flow from one end to another end, from uh, two between the two electrodes, uh, it should be a linear backbone. Uh, another thing is there should be extensive conjugation. Means there should be a, a continuous alternate uh, pi bonds should be present. So because of the flow, for the flow of electrons, okay. If you take polyacetylene, this is the polymer of polyacetylene. In a neutral chain, uh, it is a linear uh, structure and this has uh, extensive conjugation, but uh, this will not uh, conduct electricity. In order to make it conducting, you have to create the charge. What is charge? Either you should uh, create positive charge or an electron, negative charge. For that, you can go for uh, by adding the oxidizing agent or reducing agent. If you add oxidizing agent, it takes out one electron from the polymer and creates positive charge. That is called A, means acceptor. Or if you add donors, if you add, add donors, reducing agent, they add electron to that system and creates negative charge. In this case, by adding acceptor A, it's an oxidizing agent. It takes out one of the pi electron and it becomes A minus and uh, another pi electron remain on that carbon atom. Okay, this electron is, uh, one of the pi electron is taken out by this acceptor and creates a positive charge. And this carbon will retain one free radical of that pi bond. As a result, uh, a plus and minus uh, electron, these are called excitons, are present uh, next to each other. Such system is called polaron. Such system is called polaron. If one more acceptor, is added to that system that again takes out that electron, uh, one electron from this and uh, creates a positive charge. And because of the presence of two electron, after adding this, it forms a pi bond here. It forms a pi bond and two negative charges are created, di anions, a positive one, two charges are created and they're moving away from each other. They're called solitons. So this is the band gap of this uh, polyacetylene after doping means after adding electron, there is a creation of intermediate energy levels between a conduction band and valence band. And uh, this electron can easily move to this uh, conduction band and hence it conducts electricity. This is a neutral soliton. When you take out this uh, electron, it creates a hole. This is called positively charged soliton. If you add one electron to this, it becomes negatively charged soliton. This is positively charged, negatively charged soliton. This is for, uh, in the next slide, okay, we'll discuss, uh, this is a polyacetylene and this is a soliton. After adding uh, uh, acceptor, it has taken out one electron and created a uh, free radical over here. 
and there should be a positive charge here. When this is the system of poly in conduction and band and valence band are filled and this is empty. And when you add one electron to this, this is a reduction by adding electron. This is by using a donors. By using a donor, you can create the negative charge here. Uh, when you add electron to this, one electron free radical is going to form. And this pi bond, both the electrons are shifted to this carbon. As a result, you will get negative charge here. And this is a polar arm. Radical anion is going to form. Okay. So there was uh, two electrons. Then uh, you are, by using a donor, you are adding one more electron. So this is a free radical having higher energy. And these are the electrons of this uh, charge. Uh, there were uh, those electrons were present in the valence band. Uh, after they become lone pair, they have come out from valence band and their energy is increased. That's why the energy levels are shown here. This is for the negative charge two electrons and this is for the free electron. If uh, you add one more electron to this, this will also become negative charge and this will also become negative charge. And you will have two energy levels of this and uh, this is called dianion, bipolar on a negative charge. Soliton is for positive and uh, polaron is for the negative by using uh, reducing agents. You can create uh, polarons, dianion. Okay. So then that uh, charges, when the, when the polarons, when the charges are close to each other, they're called polarons. When they start moving uh, towards uh, the electrodes in the opposite direction, the flow of charge is called electron and hence it conducts uh, and it shows the conductivity. So it becomes a soliton pair of almost equal energy. This is about the mechanism of conduction in case of uh, conducting polymers. So with this, I'm concluding my discussion on conducting polymers and the requirements and mechanism using polyacetylene. If you have any questions or clarifications, uh, you can contact me through this email ID. Thank you for watching this video.